wow, it's hard to believe we've had 181 mosh pits. That's a lot of Fridays. We appreciate the hour with you. We truncated down into five minutes, and this is what we have for you today. James Waddell, who's helped us out with a half a dozen mosh pits, focusing in on AI, is taking the reins and introducing his panel as he broadcasts from the ranch. We are doing some extraordinary things today. Let me introduce my co-host, Chris. Chris, how are you, sir? Chris is our digital twin expert for the conversation today. Chris, would you like to say hi to the audience? I'm doing great, James. Hi. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Um, looking forward to the conversation. Matt Fisher, our next guest co-host today. How are you doing, Matt? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. I'm looking forward to chatting about AI with this group. And Caleb is an innovator in bringing technology to the architectural process. Caleb, would you like to introduce yourself just for a sec? Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Looking forward to this. So the introduction of today's show, it's really about bringing clarity to the market. A little bit of clarity in what Cognitive's role is in the world. Uh, and how we assist in corporate real estate, facility management, and architectural process, but really more about how we can help the industry adopt AI and move forward. What's the starting point? What's the trigger? What has to happen? And then what's the output? Once you've started there, you get a really good strategic intent for what you can use from an AI automation perspective, but it also makes pretty clear the data preparation or the data that you need to ingest in order to make uh, a good decision in terms of automation. I think that's huge because it's like, you need the goal, you need the direction, you need to know where you're headed. And a lot of times in our consulting practice, when we see where people are headed, we're able to add like layers of AI or different uh, tools onto it to, to get them to achieve their goals. So I think it's pretty clear. And it's all about how we take that data and how we present that data so that AI can access that data and function properly and give you the results you need. Um, and you need to ask yourself, how do I assemble that data? How do I operate my facility? How do I put that together um, in order to function properly and get the results I need? I think from a design perspective, I can speak. And then also from a more general perspective, I love that you just demoed telling a document or telling any generative AI to ask you questions. I think that's honestly the key to most of the generative AI tools out there is a lot of people look at them and they say, oh, this is going to be able to design everything for me. Um, this is gonna know everything. Generative AI doesn't know things. And honestly, in, from the design side, you're often, our job is to get information from clients. What generative AI can do is inform you of A, the things you're not thinking about that maybe could inform a design and B, create options for you to refine rather than forcing rather than you having to design everything from scratch and pass it down like i think that's that's really and i love that demo because it's saying rather than try to just get information from an ai let it mm -hmm. tell you what it needs from you and then it can create things for you like there, there's so much capability in that aspect is it, a, it so you mentioned that the digital twin is in existence you can do that so is it an image or a schematic of a particular uh, set, and then taking a picture to Billy's question, and like, will the will the AI change that out, or is it just a a, a note on top of the existing equipment to say this has been updated to this picture? Just trying to get an idea. Is an automation process that takes the digital twins, and we've done this in sandbox, right? So now we need to bring it to implementation, make it real. So this is real for us in a closed environment. We're going to make it real in an open environment. You can draw data out of a digital twin and you can manipulate it. You can look at it. You can analyze it. You can do really cool stuff with it. It's only useful if you're able to push the insights back into the digital twin model, right? So the digital twin model is where everything lives and should live. In the early days, like AI usually works off of a heat map. And what I mean by that is levels of accuracy as you're training a model. So it could be like 90% sure that this is the right information with this documented sources. And while in the early days before pushing it back into the model, it might be human reviewed, but if you hum, human review the same thing enough times, it'll automatically be like the rate of the heat map and accuracy will go like 9,900%. So that's probably what you gotta 
expect in the beginning, but then over time it'll, it can do it automatically. But I kind of want to, I guess, add a, a little bit of a layer of complexity of like, there's, there's two different items here. One is kind of this, this bot or this agent. It's something that's been trained on your company data. It's something that, you know, to match point can interact with specific APIs. It can do a specific task or do multiple specific tasks. And then you have out there a bunch of public tools that anyone can use for, they're, they're much more generic. They can operate, like you're talking about putting together a presentation. It can put together a very generic presentation or it can put together a presentation that's very specific for what you want to do. And I think the difference between one those is the agents are trained on how your company operates and they're really good at, at operating, but they require you to, as Matt's saying, they require you to define the workflow first. They require you to train it.